the job market out there is pretty tough right now. Could the Oilers be in the market for a PTO signing? You are Locked On Oilers, your daily podcast on the Edmonton Oilers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Tuesday edition of Locked On Oilers. I'm your host, Nick Zararis. I want to thank everybody who makes Locked On Oilers their first listen of the day. Locked On Oilers, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. And today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel, where now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. So today's episode, we are going to be talking all about the PTO market. And no, that is not an abbreviation for paid time off. That is a sh- abbreviation for, for, for professional tryout offer or opportunity. It is a specific type of contract. A very specific type of player falls into this boat. We're going to start there at the outset, what the contract is, how it works, the mechanics of it, some examples of players in recent NHL history that have signed them, that have stuck on with the team that offered them. Then our second segment, we're going to tackle why the Oilers might want to consider this. And then the third segment, we'll make the counterpoint. We'll present both sides of the argument and you can walk away, make your determination and let me know in the comments on YouTube or on social what you think about the Oilers venturing into the PTO market. So starting out. We all understand the Oilers are capped out. They do not have a lot of financial flexibility. They are not going to be able to add any players without subtracting players from their roster. That is the calculation you've made when you've assembled a roster with this little financial flexibility. That tells me a few things. Number one, it tells me you're trying to be a Stanley Cup contender. Check. The Oilers are absolutely a Stanley Cup contender. Right now, they are the betting favorite over on FanDuel. And When you go into a season with this much invested, this much stake in on one individual season, and you think about it, the Oilers have lost. The Oilers have lost quite a few pieces from their team last year. You had to trade Ryan McLeod. You lost Philip Broberg and Dylan Holloway to offer sheets. Philip, uh, not Philip Broberg, excuse me. I said him already. Warren Fogle leaves in free agency. You have to trade away Cody Ceci. You took a real, you took it on the chin. You lost financial flexibility. And that's the entire point of the salary cap is to penalize good teams, to make sure the good teams don't hoard all the talent. And as the Oilers sit here right now, there are some question marks about their lineup. But let's start with the PTO side of this before we talk about the Oilers specifically. PTO is a mechanic within the collective bargaining agreement for players to more or less audition for a roster spot. You get a PTO, a professional tryout offer, as a player when you are coming off of a few different things. Number one, if you're coming off of a serious injury where you didn't play a lot last year or didn't play at all the previous season, if you are a veteran player who is coming off an expensive contract. And you probably signed that contract when you were 26 or 27 years old. You were close to the peak of your physical performance, the peak of your counting stats. And you were worth what you were worth when you signed it as a 26, 27, 28 year old. But over the life of that contract, as your skills eroded because you got older, you're going to be worth less money. Now, because of that, the market doesn't really know how to value your skill set. It wants to see what you can do in a new environment. And that's one of the real perks of the PTO from a team perspective, because it's no obligation. There is not a guarantee of a roster spot. A PTO allows you to participate in training camp and preseason games. And then once the preseason is over, those two, those two sides have to make a determination as to whether or not they're going to move forward. And typically, when you are signing a PTO as a player, you're just looking for a shot. And one of the perks as a player of signing a PTO and taking that opportunity is that on occasion, even if the team that offered you the PTO doesn't ultimately opt to sign you for the regular season, Another team they, who, do, who does professional scouting in the preseason, they can take a long look, they can look around, they can see how guys do in the preseason and other opportunities. And that is also another path onto an NHL roster. So even if the Oilers were to bring in somebody on a PTO, that doesn't necessarily mean they'd play with the Oilers. And if anything, it gives them an opportunity to hang around to stick in the league. And when you are at that point in your career where you're going to consider taking a PTO, that opportunity is invaluable. And sometimes 
you're going to have to. If you are a player that is coming off of a down year or coming off of a big contract that you know you didn't perform up to, you're going to have a hard time stating what you think your fair market value is. And the PTO is an opportunity for you to play your way onto a team. That's why you'll see guys get this opportunity from time to time. It is a path to get into the NHL. So a PTO does not guarantee anything. If a team wants to keep a player, they do have to offer a standard contract before the start of the regular season, the standard contract that we're all familiar with, what people sign on the first day of free agency. Some notable players who signed PTOs last year around this time, Zach Aston Reese signed one with Carolina. He ultimately ended up signing a contract with Detroit where he spent most of the season in Grand Rapids, their AHL affiliate. Josh Bailey, the former New York Islander, signed one with Ottawa. He ultimately did not sign with the team. Nathan Beaulieu auditioned with Carolina. He did not make a team last year. Kiefer Bellows signed one with Carolina. He was released from him. Jamie Benn's brother, Jordy, signed one with the Stars. He was not ultimately opted. He ultimately was not signed to an NHL roster. But these are the good examples. These are these are what you're trying to do if you have a PTO opportunity. So a couple of years ago, the Carolina Hurricanes, both Derek Stepan and Calvin DeHaan ended up making that team, playing on the team through the postseason. Daniel Sprong this past season with Seattle ultimately ended up with Detroit. Jimmy Vesey with the Rangers. Mike Hoffman did this. Travis Hamannick did it with the Canucks. Lee Stepniak with the Devils. It is a path to get you in the mix. And that's the key here. When you are... You know you're good enough to stay in the NHL, but you're not quite sure what your value is. It's a lot better to take this PTO, to take a PTO, than it is to go play over in Europe. I I know a lot of people will say, well, Europe, you're going to get better accommodations. You won't be in the AHL. You're going to be a professional. You're going to make decent money. It's a lot easier to get back to the NHL on a PTO and the preseason circuit than it is playing over in Europe. Their seasons are in a line. The season in Europe goes a little bit shorter and starts a little bit earlier so that it doesn't really line up with the end of the NHL season. So it's harder for you to parlay success in a European league, whether it's the KHL, the Swedish league, the Swiss league, whatever. It is really difficult to get your way, to get back stateside and into the NHL from playing in Europe once you've already left. It happens from time to time, but for the most part, this is going to be your path. Because like we just talked about, guys can play on the Oilers. And even if the Oilers opt to not bring them in, another team who's doing professional scouting might say, we think we like this guy. We're going to offer you a contract and you're going to report to our AHL affiliate for extended preseason. And you're going to be our first call up if we have an injury at the NHL level. And the last thought I want to give you on this before we move on and we make the point and counterpoint. It's a sign of somebody who is willing to be a good teammate. And it is difficult for a professional athlete to show contrition, to be empathetic, to... It is really difficult for a professional athlete to show outwardly, hey, I'm just really here because I want to be here. And there's no better op- no better example of that than a PTO, where you are just trying out for the team with the hopes of getting a contract offer. And not every player is cut out to take one of those. There are guys who would rather retire or go to Europe than they would rather take a PTO and audition for a team because they feel like that's beneath them based on what they had done already, as opposed to viewing it as an opportunity to play their way onto a team or play their way back into the NHL. And it takes a certain type of guy, a certain type of mindset to really believe that I I have enough in my tank, still in the tank to play my way onto this team, even though I have no guarantee of being on this team. So With that in mind, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. Then we're going to lay out the case for why the Oilers might want to consider one of the various NHL veterans who's available to sign a PTO right now. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. 
Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Thank you for making Locked On Oilers your first listen of the day. For your second listen, enjoy the Locked On NHL podcast. Locked On NHL provides you with a national perspective on all things NHL each and every day with national experts and local insight on every team in the league. Available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So you might be asking me, well, Nick, if the Oilers sign a PTO player, where are they going to slot in? And it's a fair question, and it's one of the counterpoints against it. But if you are of the opinion that experience matters and you want to have as many opportunities as possible, it can't hurt to bring in another guy with NHL experience. And we all know how organizations, coaches, decision makers feel about experience, especially on the back end, that it takes a while for coaches to feel comfortable with young defensemen to promote them up the lineup, to give them more opportunities. And I'm not saying the Oilers should be looking at these guys, at any of these PTO candidates as a roster player, but it cannot hurt to give them an opportunity. And I know some people will say, wouldn't you rather the young guy get those preseason reps than a veteran? And I don't necessarily disagree, but I do think it's worth considering because with the way the Oilers are set up right now in their bottom six on their back end, especially their third defensive pair, you are looking at question mark. And the best way to answer questions is to get as much information as possible. This is always how I've looked at scouting. It's always how I've looked at player evaluation. The more information you have, the better a job you are doing as an evaluator. If you can bring in somebody to push Ty Emerson or uh, Troy Stetcher on that right side, even if they don't end up making the team, making them be competitive, making them earn that spot, that does matter to some degree. And I know there will be people who are familiar with some of my other work when I was doing Locked on Flames or any of the work I've done covering the Rangers where I've always said, You're better off playing the young guy because he might be bad as opposed to the veteran who is bad. And I say for the most part, that's a reasonable rule of thumb to go by. But there are exceptions. And I think when you're an Oilers team that is so veteran laden, that does have such high expectations. I don't know if you can necessarily go into a regular season saying Troy Stetcher and Ty Emerson are going to be our second and third right handed defensemen just because of the pure unknown. They have serious uncertainty on the right side. Troy Stetcher played 54 games this past NHL season, got injured. He played 81 games two years ago on the Coyotes and the Flames. Three years ago, he played 29 total games on the Kings and the Red Wings. He's had 17-ish minutes per game, is a rough career average. And he hasn't played against quality opposition that he would see on a second defensive pair in almost eight years now. His last season playing more than 50% of his ice time, according to Puck IQ, which is a database that tracks the quality of competition, was 2016-2017. That was the last time Troy Stetcher spent the majority of his ice time out there against quality competition. And assuming he's penciled in on that second pair with Darnell Lurse, they are going to get the hardest competition. And I know that the Oilers under Chris Knobloch, I almost said Chuck Knobloch again. I, I saw a TikTok the other day with Chuck Knobloch, the baseball player in it, and that's probably why he was on my mind. But under Chris Knobloch, The Oilers have not been a hard match team. They have said, we're going to get our best guys out there as often as we can, regardless of who's out there for the other team. And it makes the life of the defense as a group easier when McDavid is out there with anybody, because he's going to be able to do some of the work of transitioning from defense to offense, putting pressure on the other team's defense and not making you play defense. And that's going to be the key. I'm uh, you will hear me say. The key to the Oilers this season is playing as little defense as possible a couple thousand, if not hundred thousand times over the course of this upcoming season. They are at a point now where if they are playing too much defense, it is going to get ugly. And I think Troy Stetcher is fine. I don't think he's a second pair defenseman in on a cup contender in today's NHL. Ty Emerson, it's to be determined. He very well could be a third or a second pair guy. He could be a career AHLer, you know, as a 24 year old to only have 30 career NHL games, especially being in organizations like the Sharks who had ample opportunity. Yeah, Emerson, 30 career NHL games as a 24 year old, 132 games at the AHL level. 
three years of college at the University of Wisconsin and then three years with the junior national U.S. National Development Team program, 18 and a half minutes per game. I think if you were to gamble on upside, Emerson could probably usurp Troy Stetcher. But being that he's a little bit more on the bigger side, I don't know if you necessarily want two of two big and slower guys, Emerson and Nurse, paired together purely from a skill set perspective. You know, you want a puck mover and a puck retriever together. And Emerson, though he's not inadequate offensively, he does profile as more of the traditional puck retriever. And when it comes to actual candidates for these spots, you're going to listen to me say some of these names and you're going to hear me audibly wince after I say some of them. Candidates include Tony D'Angelo, who I have really no interest in. Someone like Tyson Berry, who for the joke, for the bit, it might be funny, but I I struggle to imagine the Oilers doing that. I know it's a different general manager now. And frankly, the argument for doing this is the bit. Frankly, it's the argument for bringing in Tyson Berry is purely because he was on the Oilers before and then they were made to get rid of him to improve the team. And it would make Leon Dreisaitl happy after they got rid of Cody Cece, one of his friends on the team, and bringing back somebody else he liked to kind of placate him. And the problem with a guy like Barry, a guy like Tony D'Angelo, I could also mes- mention Justin Schultz as a candidate. D- Dante Fabro is somebody that other people have mentioned, but he's not a PTO candidate. He's a pending free agent who light workload in Nashville, somebody I might be interested in, but he's a different conversation. So D'Angelo, Schultz, and Barry. I don't think any of those guys is definitively better than Emerson or um, Stetcher. But I do think there's a possibility one of those guys could be better than them. And look, you are never going to hear me defend Tony D'Angelo on the internet. He's an entirely net liability defensively. He is one of, if not the single worst defensive defenseman I have ever seen. His positional awareness, his lack of physicality, his inability to just get out of his own way sometimes. It's really, it's befuddling that somebody who was drafted as high as he was, who's had as many opportunities as he is, is as raw of a talent as he is, where his decision-making and his positioning is just wholly inadequate. Justin Schultz, older, hasn't really played high-leverage hockey in a while. I think he's a reasonable candidate for this, because at the very least, he's going to push Emerson and Stetcher. And then Barry, I think it's more of a bit than anything. I don't think any of those three guys is definitively better than what the Oilers currently have. But I do think it's worth considering just for the sake of making the team more competitive in the preseason. And this is one of those things that does drive me insane sometimes when teams artificially force competition, especially amongst guys that they're trying to build the confidence of. But in this case, because the expectations are so high, the Oilers can afford to try and push guys. They can afford to try and wean guys. This isn't a rebuilding team that's playing Cody CC 20 minutes a night as a first pair defenseman with somebody waiting in the wings to replace him. This is a team where the expectation is to win the Stanley Cup. If we can make Ty Emerson have a good preseason because we pushed him and he thought he might be going back to the AHL or Troy Stetcher really came into camp ready to go because he knew he was going to get pushed for his spot, that can only help you if your bar is as high as the bars for the Edmonton Oilers. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to lay out the cons of why the Oilers shouldn't bring in somebody on a PTO right after this. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Well, we have something a little different for you now. Through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then, with the YouTube TV base pan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon at a market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment you can cancel anytime. So, the last few days, I've been telling you guys about week one. But if you're the law in this for the long game, you want to talk futures. The Kansas City Chiefs, the betting favorite, five and a half to one. The 49ers, six to one. Now, next tier down, the Ravens, 11 to one. The Lions, 12 to one. The Eagles, 13 to one. The Texans, 15 to one. The Bengals, 15 to one. The Bills, 17 to one. The Cowboys, 18 to one. My long shot, somebody I like in that middle tier. I do like the Cincinnati Bengals at 15 to one to take home their first Super Bowl in franchise history. So if you want to get in on the action this summer, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sportsbook. 
and get in on the fun. Thank you to everybody who is hanging out on this Tuesday edition in the doldrums of summer. And let me tell you guys, I cannot wait to actually start talking about hockey. As much as I enjoy the philosophical debate of the offseason, roster construction, power ranking players and teams going into the season, at the end of the day, this is a hockey podcast. And having actual hockey to talk about is why you do a podcast. I love this stuff. I love doing the offseason. I love trades. I love free agency. I love player evaluation because this is where we determine who does and doesn't know what they're talking about. But it is going to feel so good when we get to October and we are looking down the barrel at the Oilers playing three or four games in seven days and we can sink our teeth into all of these decisions that we've spent the last several months talking about. You know, it doesn't feel that long ago that the Oilers lost game seven to the Florida Panthers in the Stanley Cup final. And at the same time, it feels like forever ago. A lot has happened in that span. You heard me talk about all the players that have moved on. Ken Holland no longer with the organization. Jeff Jackson's flurry of moves around the opening of free agency, hiring Stan Bowman, the offer sheets, still needing to take care of a dry sidle and Evan Bouchard contracts for next summer. There are so many moving parts that sometimes it's hard. If you don't take a step back, you can miss things. You know, to quote the great Ferris Bueller, life moves pretty fast. And the Oilers, as a Stanley Cup favorite, they have a lot to do. And as much as we would all like to say, it's all going to fall into place. The guys will stay healthy. They can do this at the deadline. They'll be ready to peak going into the playoffs. They're going to have a good regular season, so they should have a reasonable first round matchup where it's not going to be a bloodbath like it was for the Jets last year playing Colorado in the first round or Dallas playing Vegas in the first round. But I think the argument against a PTO, and this is more philosophical and this is more people management than roster management. And those two part, the roster management and people management are often in direct conflict with each other. I know that if I were Ty Emerson or I was trying to build him up, to psych him up, to get him ready for this upcoming season, I would be hammering home, hey man, this is your opportunity. You may never get an easier path onto an NHL roster than this season because the team is not in a position to go out and bring anybody in on on a contract right now. You know, I was going to say guaranteed money, but any contract in the NHL is guaranteed. It's not like it is in football where the money's not guaranteed. But going in, you want Emerson feeling ready to go. You don't want him stepping on eggshells, feeling like he's got to be as safe and as responsible as possible. You want him to be his authentic self as a player, to be able to find out exactly what he is. Because if he plays it too safe, if he isn't as invested in trying to be the best version of himself and is instead worried about being responsible, stay home, whatever cliche you want to use to describe that skill set, the Oilers are going to miss out. And you heard me say it in the second segment that the Oilers need as much information about the guys on their team as they possibly can. Part of that is understanding how these guys deal with adversity. And some guys just aren't cut out for it. Some guys cannot hack that direct positional competition That's why you'll see this a lot in football, where if the team has an unsteady starter, you know, think about the Giants and Daniel Jones, they won't bring in a serious backup like a Jameis Winston to push that player because they don't want to mess with his confidence. And in this case, I don't know Ty Emerson as a person. I don't really know him particularly well as a hockey player because he just doesn't have a big enough sample to really pour through the data to understand how he plays the game. But if I'm trying to get him ready for the season and Troy Stetcher for that matter. I want them coming in ready to go. I want them to feel like they are situated to make something happen. And the Oilers probably couldn't do a PTO anyway, a PTO that eventually gets on with the team anyway, without another roster move. They have Little cap space as of the moment. They still need to sort out Evander Kane, LTIR or not, cap accrual or not. Because once you put someone on LTIR, your team can't accrue cap space. And frankly, we know the Oilers are going to be in the market for a defenseman this year. We know that come deadline time, the Oilers are going to be looking to add a defenseman that can slide into the top four that's going to push one of Stetcher or Emerson out. And there's a world where Emerson and Stetcher are just in direct competition with each other. Whoever plays better in the preseason gets first crack at playing with Darnell Nurse. Beyond that, 
as the season goes along, ebbs and flows. Maybe you see Bouchard with Nurse at points. You see Ekholm with Stetcher, whatever. But to start the season, it seems like we're going to start with Stetcher with Nurse and Kulak with um, Emerson. And from there, the preseason will take its shape, then the regular season. And as the season goes along and we start to get more information about these guys, we can better determine what the right course of action is for these teams and for the Oilers, I should say. And the last point I want to make is part of taking a gamble on somebody like Ty Emerson and somebody like Troy Stetcher is the cost is defined. A PTO guy is not going to command a lot of money on a contract he signs after that PTO, but it is more money that the Oilers would have to figure out a way to accommodate, whether that's sending Joshua Brown down, one of the other bottom six forwards, whether it's uh, whether it's Connor Brown or it's um, Derek Ryan, one of those guys. You're still going to have to make a subsequent move if you bring somebody else in, and that's why I probably think this won't happen. But you let me know down in the comments if you think the Oilers are going to bring in a PTO defenseman just just for the purpose of pushing, let me know who you'd be interested in, whether it's D'Angelo, if it's Tyson Berry, if it's Justin Schultz. If you're watching over on YouTube, leave me a comment. Let me know. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the alarm bell so you get a notification whenever new content goes live. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, please subscribe to the show. Give the show a five-star review. And, and before getting out of here, thank you for making Locked On Oilers your first listen of the day. Now go check out the Locked on NHL podcast where the season never ends and provides national expertise with a local flavor. You can find the link to Locked on NHL in the description so you don't need to search. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Talk to you guys tomorrow. Until then, let's go Oilers.